Welcome to the daily briefing from interest.co.nz. I'm David Jaston. Today we update wholesale electricity prices, we look at the exchange rate, review the latest data on the risk premium, and we'll wrap up with what the other media are reporting. The wholesale cost of electricity fell to about its lowest level since February at the end of last week. This will have contrasted quite oddly with retail rates as many customers have been getting price increase letters recently. Electricity demand in recent weeks has been running lower than the equivalent week a year ago and generation has been running quite a bit higher than demand. As you would expect, generation of non-hydro power is at lower levels than the equivalent period a year ago. And the reason is the very good inflow rates into our hydro storage lakes. In fact, we've had about 10 continuous days where inflows have been way above average. And this has pushed lake levels up from about 72% of average to 86% of average. And back to the levels last seen this time a year ago. If your electricity company is pushing through a price increase, it is certainly not because of higher wholesale electricity costs. The Australian dollar surged to a 23-year high against the US dollar and a 10-year high against the pound during recent trading. The New Zealand dollar has dipped below 85 Australian cents, weakening against the Aussie but strengthening against the greenback. In fact, our strength against the US dollar is quite marked. Sentiment is building that the Reserve Bank may in fact have to raise the OCR again before it is in a position to reduce it. Along with the conventional view that another cut in US rates may be due from the Fed, we have an expectation of a widening rate gap, just the conditions to reinvigorate the carry trade. You'll remember the carry trade. It feeds on the expectation of a rising interest rate differential. And that drives our currency higher. And all this is coming when almost $4 billion in Euro Kiwi issues are about to be redeemed. Ordinarily, this would weigh on our currency, but it looks like we have these special conditions which could avoid that sinking feeling. Our weekly update of the New Zealand dollar risk premium usually focuses on the one-year maturity. Today we want to extend that to look at the five-year maturity. Five-year swap rates are about three quarters of a percent lower than one-year swap rates. Both have risen in the past week, up about five basis points for the one-year and ten basis points for the five-year. These latest rises are pretty much pricing in more risk for the New Zealand economy, rather than reflecting changes in the present international bond markets. We appear to be on a steady track higher, and both the five-year rate itself and the risk premium are moving up. We expect five-year mortgage money to cost 9% or more within the next month. And finally today, a quick wrap-up of some other recent news. Investment bank Merrill Lynch & Co. said credit and mortgage worries will lead it to take a third quarter loss as it takes almost $5 billion in write-downs in the wake of the credit crunch that has struck Wall Street in the past few months. Economists are beginning to wonder if housing, the driver behind our credit spending splurge of the past few years, could soon become the economy's Achilles heel by curbing the so-called wealth effect. Rabobank has set the rate on its $900 million capital securities offer, which closed fully subscribed. It set an initial interest rate for the first 12 months of 9.482%, which reflects a margin of 0.76% over the one-year swap rate. You can get more news and start with Newsmaker Views on our news page. Join us again tomorrow for the freshest finance news on the web. We'll see you then.